most programmers learn C, C++ as their first language or shortly after that. To this day, these two languages remain at the foundation of modern computing. They power everything from operating systems to embedded devices, to game engines and mission-critical applications. C++ is one of the most feature-rich programming languages. Every operating system exposes some sort of C++ API to call its internal functions and interact with it. With that in mind, when you start learning and programming in C++, you usually work on a single platform. And for most people, that's usually Windows and Visual Studio and Microsoft's MSVC compiler. But what happens if you want to write cross-platform C++ code? It's definitely possible, but you run into the problem of tackling different build systems on each platform. On Windows, the default compiler is MSVC. On Linux, you usually have GCC and Makefiles. On Mac OS, you will get CWANG and Makefiles. These differences mean that to have a cross-platform C++ project, you need some sort of a pre-built system to help you tackle the challenges of just organizing a project on its own so that it can be built on all operating systems. That's where CMake comes in. It's not a compiler. CMake won't make your code cross-platform. If you call specific operating system functions or rely on compiler internals, CMake won't make your code cross-platform. It will just make sure that your project can be built and bundled using the appropriate tools for the platform you're working on. In this video, I'll walk you through how I set up a cross-platform C++ project as I've been tinkering with computer graphics recently and I work on all three operating systems when I have time. I do that with CMake and I like to keep things very simple. In this introduction, we'll create a basic project in three stages. We'll first create uh, the most basic C++ Hello World app with a single main entry point, single CPP file project that can pass to an executable. Then we'll add a static library inside our project. And finally, we'll include an external library, external dependency as a Git sub module. After we do all that, I'll demonstrate how to build and compile that project on Linux, Mac, and Windows. All right, step one would be to, of course, create a directory. I am in my repos folder and I'll make a my project dir. CD into it. It's currently empty. I will open it with my text editor. And let's add a file. CMake lists dot text. A CMake list text file, a text file is basically the entry point for CMake. That's where all of the configuration will be. And CMake will rely on that file to understand the project structure. I will also add a, an SRC folder and a main CPP file inside of it. So this will be stage one, a simple Hello World app with a one executable and one file entry point. So let's write that main function now. All right, that's pretty much the most straightforward C++ program we can do. Let's go to CMake list now and describe that project. The first thing we need to do, we will have three lines in total for this simple app. We need to specify the minimum required version of CMake and that's done with the CMake minimum required. Then we specify version and write the actual version number. I usually go with 3.1, a fairly recent version of CMake. CMake is quite old now. So you, depending on the minimum required version, the syntax and the support of syntax will differ, of course. But 3.1 will support everything we'll talk about in this video. The next line we need to specify is project. I will, of course, call it my project, just like the directory. And here we can also include a version. And the last thing is to add an executable. And that executable, and it will it will actually use the main CPP file as its entry point that is in the source directory. All right, and that's pretty much everything we need for to build this with CMake. Let me open another terminal tab. To build with CMake, you first have to have CMake installed. So after you have CMake, we create a build directory by convention, CD into it and run CMake dot dot to go to the previous directory where we can find the CMake lists.txt file. When we run that, CMake will identify the compiler. It will create the project files and write them in the build directory. If I ls now, you see we have the necessary files to build the app. 
which on Linux is a make file. And now let's use that make file with the make command and we build the project with GCC. I can now, I now have an executable here, my project, and I can run it just like this. Here's our app. Of course, at this point, the application is quite straightforward. It's just a single entry point. Let's go a little bit more complicated. The next step you would probably make in terms of project structure complexity is to add some kind of library that is internal to your application, some sort of static library. This is frequent in C++ projects. You have a library of classes or functions that aid what you're doing in your app. So to do that, I like to create a libs directory. Let me just go to this. Sorry, uh, to create a libs directory. And inside of that, I create a separate folder for each library I have. In this case, let's call this my lib. Um, actually, I'll remove that and I'll add a folder, my lib. And inside, I will just add two files, a header and a cpp file. Now, usually you wouldn't structure you, libraries wouldn't be that simple usually. You would mm, probably structure them just like this actual project with, it, with an src directory, sometimes an input directory for the headers, sometimes not. You could have your headers in the src folder. That's not that important. Uh, the point is that we have a separate project, C++ project inside of our main project with a static library. It doesn't build to an executable, but to a library that is to be consumed by the parent project. And to do that, we also need to add a CMake lists.txt file in that MyLib project. And it needs to include just one line, at library. And the name of the library, I'll call it MyLib, and the files, which will be MyLib.h, MyLib CPP. That's enough. Now let's go to the header file and write some code. Uh, this library will be single class. I'll just do something, mm, some dummy content. Um, let's make a member of variable called number and just a getter and a setter for it. Yeah, of course, it's a dummy thing. It's not a real, it's not a real library, but that's what library would usually look like. Some class with functions or just functions. And let's implement these now. Um, before that, let's add pragma once here and include it here, the header file. Now we can implement the get number. Of course, we need that namespace and the void set number. And that's going to be this number. I want to use the m underscore syntax. In this case, let me just see if, that, if I do that. Yeah, I do that. We have our library at that point. Now, of course, that library just specifies its name and the included files, but we need to add it to our main project. And to do that, we use the add subdirectory and just specify libs my lib. That is enough to include the sub project. Now, the way to think about this, we need to write two more lines. When you work with C++ libraries, we always, we always need to do um, basically two things. Add the include directory so that the project can find from where to include header files and link appropriate files in the project. And to do that in CMake, we can do add include directories, to specify the include directories sorry, not at uh, specified target include directories for a specific target. And the target is my project. We specify the, uh, if, if we should include them privately or publicly, the difference between public, private here, and we also have interface as an option is that if we include a directory here in this project, my project, and another project includes it on its own, and that is public, uh, we specify that the parent project should also include these directories. If it's private, it will only include uh, the directories if we uh, build this actual project, not any parent 
that includes it. In this case, public is not wrong, private wouldn't be wrong as well. We are building a, we're basically building an executable end project that's not going to be used as a library by any other project. So private is also fine. But let's leave public and the input directory is going to be lips my lip target link libraries will link against that project my library project and uh, here we don't specify a folder but the library name and that's what we need to include our static library let's now build attempt to build um, let's make okay and let's run make we have a typo I added I made this typo right here okay so we were able to link now before we build and run this let's let's use the library first to use it I have the include directory so I can just include my lib.h and the next thing I can do now is use that class my lib um, lib instance let's call it on the stack let's set the number to something like two and let's output it okay so that should set number in that lib instance and output it to the console let's make this again and run my project and here we have it my lib number two so the static library is building and working correctly this way you can have as many libraries as you want uh, included and built into your main executable project now the third stage of this project integration is going to be to actually include an external library which is very frequent with c++ if you're doing something like graphics or whatever you're doing there's a large ecosystem of external libraries you can use and operating system provided uh, lips. Um, but now I'm going to, as we're talking about cross-platform, the best strategy I would recommend is not to include operating system internals and dependent uh, dynamic library or some sort of library is going to be available to you, but include the library source as a sub-module. Because this way uh, it's going to be much more reliable and you can depend that the source needed, the source code needed is in your repository. To demonstrate, let's include GeoFW, a simple library that creates a window, cross-platform window on any operating system, and a simple OpenGL context inside so that you can draw graphics. A very good example, a good simple example for a library because it's relatively small. Um, let's get the repository code. Now, as I said, I will put that as a sub-module. So let's, to do that, let me clear that console. Let's initialize a Git repository in the main in our main project and now we have a git repository i will create an external directory where i like to put my external libraries you can also do something like vendor um, but i like external and let's use good to module add to actually clone that repository as a sub module in the external folder and when that is complete let's go back to new vim we have let me go up this we have our external folder gofw inside and the library of course gofw also includes cmake lists a cmake list file so we can include it just like we did our static library the great thing about cmake is that it's the de facto standard and uh, for cross-platform building and most projects will include some form of uh will include cmake um, there are, of course, exceptions. In the C++ ecosystem, there's always exceptions and many different ways to do things, but CMake is as standard as you will get. So let's include GOFW. It's quite simple to do uh, and very similar to our static library. We add the sub directory, of course, which is external GOFW. And then we add the include directories. I can just add them here. We, you can list um, uh, a number of include directories after the public uh, specification. You can also add another targeting well, include directories call. It's not a problem too. Uh, I'll do external GOFW and I think we had an include folder. 
which is pretty standard to have an include folder for headers in libraries. Yeah. And we need to link it. Here we specify GLFW. And that should be what we need to do to include that library. Quite straightforward. Let's go to the GLFW documentation. They had a main function to just add a uh, load a window, basically. And I'll just replace my main function with it for simplicity. Um, I removed that OpenGL code here because we haven't linked with OpenGL functions. And that's not necessary. It will just this will just create a window, and that's fine for this program. We just want to demonstrate the project structure and how to include an external library, and not focus on specifics. So let's save and go to the build directory again. I run CMake. Okay, everything uh, was successful, and let's see if we have a make file. We have a make file. Let's run make. This time the build is taking more time because we have more code to compile. And now if you run my project, we see our window. And that's um, that's how we basically create a project structure, quite straightforward with CMake, where we first have an executable cross-platform project. We add a static library and an external dependency library with GitHub modules. But we have been talking about cross-platform for a while now, and I've only built this on Linux. Let's build this on Windows and Mac now, just to check out how that works. The build process on Mac is very similar to that on Linux. We just run CMake the same way we did on Linux, and then use the make file and run make. We have to make sure that the CWANG, a compiler to chain, is available and that we have CMake installed. But the project runs and builds as expected. On Windows, we have multiple options. We can just run CMake as we did on Linux and we'll get the necessary files. After that, we can use the MS build command line executable to build the project in the terminal. Visual Studio also has the capability, of course, to load a CMake project, build it and run it. So that's my approach when I'm building cross-platform C++. I just wanted to share this video because I think some people might find it useful to see a very simplistic introduction into how to structure a very basic C++ project. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when I release another video. Take care.